Hey everybody, I want to do another update on my 125 here. I came down this morning and I did an update right as I turned the lights on just to see how everything went overnight. Uh, I'm going to say on a side note real quick while I see two of them out, I'm really happy to see my um, chocolate zebras down there out and about looking pretty good. Uh, so I don't know what happened but the video I shot this morning it was about eight minutes long and only four and a half minutes of it uploaded and I tried to reload it again and it just kept cutting off at four and a half minutes uh, so I'm not sure what was going on there some little glitch in my camera or a glitch in the upload process or something but you might notice all these bubbles I'm trying not to film it too much it makes the uh, video stabilizing really weird when it's trying to stabilize all those bubbles moving around but you can see I've got once again the bubbles underneath my power head so it's really dispersing the bubbles into the tank and giving us lots and lots and lots of good oxygen and uh, gas exchange the reason we are doing this is because I have jacked up the temperature on this tank last night I started increasing the temperature and at 10 o'clock when I normally turn the lights out we were only up to about 88 degrees so I left the lights on until about 11 and I checked again and we were still hovering around 88 and a half. And so I turned the lights off at 11. Around midnight I came in and checked with a flashlight and we were sitting at about 89.1 and I was not really willing to go to bed and leave it continuing to rise. So I knocked the temperature back a little bit and uh, when I got up this morning I came down here and I'm glad I did because the tank was about 89.1 degrees when I came down this morning everybody looks fine I haven't seen any issue I can't tell whether it's my imagination or not but I almost want to say that the white spots on the Tenopoma are starting to go away it looks like he has less on him now than it did this morning uh, but at any rate, I began jacking the temperature back up again this morning once I was able to be here and basically babysit the tank. I've been watching it very closely all day. I ran the temperature up to 88.9 degrees, and then I backed the thermostat back down, and it sat there for a couple of hours. We were above 80. 9.5 which is the number that I was looking at I wanted to be at least 89.5 to kill the uh, parasite so I got it all the way up to 89.9 and it stayed there for a couple of hours and then uh, the, the temperature is actually beginning to drop back off now and I'm going to drop it off to about 85 or 86 degrees and then we're going to leave it there for the next several days I am still medicating the tank, but as rapidly as some of these fish were starting to get covered with ick, and this one, I know it's kind of hard to tell with all the bubbles in the tank, um, but you can kind of see on this clown loach, this is probably the worst off in the tank is that clown loach, and even my larger clown loach is starting to show quite a bit of little white spots, it almost looks like white dusting over his, you know, upper portions of his body, so, and then of course the tail has quite a lot of them on there too now. So, I'm pretty sure I understand why I'm showing more and not less as time has gone on, even though I've begun the treatment on the tank, and I'm not ready to talk about that right now. I've got some other stuff going on. I just wanted to do a little update here on the tank, um, but I will be talking about that. I will be talking about what I believe to be a fairly uh, unlikely, but in all probability, the, the chain of events that led me to this uh, ick outbreak. Um, all of the timeline works out when I moved fish, when I first started noticing spots, etc. So I think I'm on top of it. I think everything's going to be fine. Uh, I've just got to really keep a close eye on this tank and make sure the temperature doesn't get any higher. I don't know if you've ever stuck your hand in a fish tank that's 90 degrees before, but it's alarmingly warm. It's bathwater warm. It makes you wonder how fish can survive in it. So now we've been waiting and watching, and we're back down to 88 and a half. So the temperature is lowering gradually. This is a, you know, it's a lot of water in there. That's a lot of mass and water tends to hold its energy fairly well. So it's going to take time for, you know, this body of water to start decreasing in temperature. As long as I don't see the heater coming back on, I'll know we're still continuing to 
go down. I backed it off to where the little red line says that we're sitting at about 85 degrees, but who knows how accurate that is. Uh, I've got both my digital uh, thermometer and my infrared thermometer here to, you know, make sure we're sitting at a proper temperature. So once we get back to 85 degrees, that will be cool enough that I'll feel comfortable that I don't have to worry about the fish overheating and it'll be warm enough that it will take care of the ick provided the medication doesn't you know if, if something is whatever I'm going to double whammy it the medication's going to kill it or the heat's going to kill it one way or the other uh, by the end of the next uh, week or so I'm not going to have ick in this tank anymore and hopefully we're going to do it without losing any fish at all so I guess just make sure you're subscribed. I got a bunch of stuff going on. We're actually going to be shooting some video of my native tank here uh, in just a few minutes. And, of course, you don't want to miss any updates on this tank either. So if you're subscribed, you won't. So don't forget this one is my 125-gallon tank. Thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next one.